Hi, everyone. I'm Jen Farmer. And on behalf of Farah and the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia FACOE team, um, welcome. We are really excited to have you all here today. Um, our symposium today is not only um, going to be in person live for the 170 so people we have in the room today, but we also have um, folks joining us online. So we're going to live stream all of today's sessions. Uh, some of the breakout sessions, only the breakout session that is held in this main ballroom will have the live stream. So those of you joining us online, um, you will get to participate um, or see the, the breakout sessions, um, but it'll only be the one that's in the main room. So again, um, I just want to start the symposium today by um, giving you a little bit of um, background and just a, a few remarks. The, um, you know, the purpose of these symposiums, uh, we, we try and pack in a lot in a short period of time. Um, the first reason, you know, we, we've been doing these symposiums now for, I think, 15 years um, is, is for education, right? A chance to learn. Um, we want you to be able to learn more about FA, whether that's managing FA, um, living with FA, the research that's ongoing, and, you know, anything that you can take um, from today, that's, that's why we're here. Um, we want everyone to be able to learn something new. We really also pull these together because we believe it's important to build community. So we want the opportunity to bring our FA community together those living with FA, caregivers, researchers, clinicians, our industry partners, so that we can all um, meet each other, share stories, and build community. And one of the other third really important aspects to these symposiums is hopefully to help you find a way to participate in our FA community. And so, um, you're automatically doing that by being here or listening online. You are an active participant. And we want to be able to um, hopefully engage that and, and help you take that forward. So we have some materials um, in your registration packets. Um, there's the agenda for today, but there's a lot of other information in there that we hope that you'll take the time to look at. For those of you who might be new to the FA community, um, there's a glossary of terms. I know we we tend to use a lot of jargon and we we do that right off the bat. And so hopefully the glossary can help you help you out. Um, but there's also a lot of other materials in there from our sponsors, uh, background materials that we've created to help educate you further about uh, participation in clinical trials or advocacy. And so we hope you'll take the time to look through your packet. There's also um, a QR code in your packet for the survey. And it's really important that you complete the survey at the end of the symposium and send us your feedback because we do pay attention to that when we plan uh, these events for the next year. So just a quick overview of where we're going to, all the ground we're going to cover today. Our first session is going to be a clinical management session. Um, and then the next session, we're going to go into um, updates on our treatment pipeline from our industry partners. We're going to have breakout sessions at two points today. There's going to be three of them. They'll repeat themselves, so you'll be able to at least attend two of the three breakout sessions. Uh, one on mental uh, wellness, one on learning, uh, learning about living with FA from each other. And then also, if you're interested in learning more about the research and the science behind FA, what FAIR is funding, um, we're going we're gonna to host a breakout session on that as well. In the afternoon, um, we're going to have uh, Lisa Fleury talk to us about insurance. Um, I, it's a whole new uh, brave world that we're entering into with trying to get medications approved. And so Lisa's going to give us a little bit of an overview of what that access process looks like. Again, breakout sessions in the afternoon. And then our final session that we'll conclude with 
is a panel discussion around participation um, and the impact of gene therapies that have been developed in other neuromuscular disease groups. So we're gonna hear from um, caregivers from the SMA and Duchenne community and be able to learn from them from, from their experience. I would like to acknowledge our sponsors. Um, without our sponsors, we would not be able to put this symposium on without any registration fee um, and really try and make it open to our whole community. Um, can I just ask all of our um, sponsors who are here, just stand up um, so that folks kind of get a, a chance to acknowledge you and thank you. For those of you, for our FA community, please take time to introduce yourself um, to, to our industry sponsors who are helping support our event. So just a few quick updates from Farah. Um, from one year ago today, obviously the biggest change um, is that we have a first approved therapy in the US. Um, it's been a long road to get there, um, and we would not be there without each and every one of you doing your part to help in the process. It started with funding basic science. It started with a mom who was up late at night researching everything she could learn about FA and calling Farah and asking us if anybody you know, was, was looking at this, this pathway and drugs that could be developed. And did we know about a company called Riata Pharmaceuticals? It came from the natural history study that many of you volunteer for, helping plan the clinical trials. It came from community members volunteering for multiple clinical trials and committing to them and staying in them into the open label extension which was over four years of commitment to clinical trial participation, to advocacy for a petition, to really push things forward with the FDA. Um, and, you know, everybody played a role. There were 74,000 signatures that were a part of that petition that came from all over the world. Um, and so this first treatment took a long time it took involvement from everyone in every possible way in terms of advocacy, trial participation, funding research, um, and we're gonna continue to do that again and again as we continue to try and bring other treatments forward. We're not done. Thanks, Deborah. We're not done. Um, there's more work to do. We need to get um, SkyClaris approved around the world. We need to have SkyClaris approved for children with FA, and we are committed to that, and so are our partners. And you'll hear more about that today. As I mentioned, we're continuing to push research forward. We have a first approved treatment, but our job isn't done. We know we need more treatments. Um, Farah has been able to grow our commitment to research funding. Um, to almost $10 million this year in research. This is only because of all of you. All the funds that we put into research come from fundraisers and donations from around the world, um, whether that's Ride a Taxi yesterday where we raised over $400,000 for research. to each of you hosting community events back home, reaching out online to family members to contribute and donate. Um, all of that fuels this research. We continue to fund basic science, translational science, um, and, and our, our natural history study. And I just wanna take a minute about that because there's some of those acronyms and nomenclature that are changing. Um, just as, I'm a little biased um, because my first, my first research study that I helped get started in FA um, was the natural history study. And that natural history study is still ongoing today. Many of you know that as FA comms. And 
we are now changing the name of FA Comms to Unify. And the reason for that is the natural history study that we've been doing here in the US, we're now combining with a natural history study that was ongoing in Europe called EFACS. And so our collaborative clinical research network that was US, Australia, Canada, recently India, is now joining forces with the clinical consortium in Europe. And we're now going to call that global consortium the FAGCC, the FA Global Clinical Consortium. And that natural history study that you've been participating in, or maybe you're thinking about participating in, will be called Unify. All the data that you've already contributed is still part of that study. It's all carrying forward, but just much bigger. And so the 1,500 people we have enrolled in the natural history study are going to be joined by almost 1,500 people that have been participating in a natural history study in Europe. And so we're just making the power of that data even stronger. Yeah. And these are all, there's over 30 clinical sites global that are participating in the FAGCC. And um, this is a massive effort. This is a huge undertaking for FARA. Um, we could not do this without all of your support, um, without the, the clinical leadership um, of folks like Dr. Lynch, um, as well as the other clinicians who've been participating and dedicated um, to natural history studies globally. And on the FARA team, um, Kate Monette joined us a year ago. And this is the one thing she's been working super hard to stand up. Um, and so Kate, thank you. I know this has been a Herculean effort. So um, I also just wanna take a minute to mention that another priority of ours this year is to really help our FA community advance clinical trials in children faster. And um, Barbara Tate, who you'll meet um, later this morning, is our chief scientific officer. And she worked with Ron early this year to draft a white paper that talks about the importance of pediatric natural history studies or the pediatric clinical trials and how we are actually prepared for them, um, how the regulatory agencies, um, how they view pediatric clinical trials, what's required for them, and what tools we currently have to be able to implement pediatric trials. And then later this year, um, with partners at St. Jude, um, we held a workshop to continue to develop our toolbox of clinical outcome measures and biomarkers that can be used for pediatric trials. And so this is really a focus of ours to be able to work with our clinicians and our industry sponsors to make sure that we're able to start clinical trials sooner um, in FA. And then finally, I just want to talk about the importance of advocacy. Um, Bridget Brennan is here today. She's back there. There she is. Um, <laughs> Bridget is our board director, and she also um, leads a, our advocacy efforts with Ron, uh, both now in DC and at a state level. And this is a way anyone can be involved. You don't have to travel necessarily to be involved in advocacy. Advocacy at home is just as important as advocacy in Washington. And there are a lot of different initiatives that we have advocated for this year. One of the big ones that we started a few years ago was trying to find more funding for research. And there is a program through the Department of Defense that funds medical research, but you have to have your disease specifically named to be able to be eligible to apply for those funds. And so the FA community advocated to have um, Friedrich's ataxia and now hereditary ataxia added to the list so that we can be eligible for funding. And last year in our first year of applying for grants, there were 14 million in new FA research funded through this mechanism. So when you're not sure what at, like how advocacy can make a difference, this is how. It, it 
allows us to bring more resources to the work that we are doing. We still need your help. This was a huge accomplishment, but we actually have to get FA added again every single year. So even though we got it added, it doesn't mean we're done. And so we need everyone's help to continue to advocate for this. And so if advocacy is something you're interested in and want to learn more about, please make sure you introduce yourself to Bridget. Um, she'll be here all day and she would love to meet you and she would love to have your help.